What's happening, everybody? We were out at the Manning Passing Academy this past weekend. We caught up with several SEC quarterbacks to talk about this upcoming season. You'll hear from Carson Beck, Graham Mertz, and Blake Shapin. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to everydayers. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. And today's episode brought to you by the Game Time app. Download Game Time, create an account, and use our code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. All right. We mentioned we were out demanding passing academy over the weekend. We're able to catch up with several. SEC starting quarterbacks out there. And first up, we're going to touch on the Georgia Bulldogs as we uh, obviously caught up with uh, Carson Beck and the Georgia Bulldogs are set to enter another season with championship hopes and several Bulldog expectations um, are very high with uh, some of the publications out there. Lindy Sports, they have five Georgia players among their first and second team preseason All-America squads. Georgia quarterback Carson Beck, offensive lineman Tate Ratledge were included on the first team, and the second team, nose tackle Nazir Stackhouse, linebacker Michael Williams, and safety Malachi Starks. But it was Carson Beck who was Lindy's pick for the 2024 Player of the Year and all eyes on him this year as he burst onto the scene last year as a starter, completed 72% of his passes, uh, 3,900 uh, 3, yards passing, 24 touchdowns, just six picks, and he set a new program record for completion percentage in a season, had the second most passing yards in a season, and posted the fourth best passer rating in program history at 167. Carson Beck began his career as a starter, 11 straight games of over 250 yards passing, the same number that Stetson Bennett had in 15 games in 2022. Now, Beck suffered just one loss in his first season. That was against Alabama in the SEC championship game. And as we know, Lyle McConkey was not healthy, Brock Bowers was not healthy, and you know, they powered through it, but Obviously, we're not at full strength, but uh, Carson Beck ended the 27-24 loss, having gone 21 of 29 for 243 yards, no touchdowns, no picks, and he and the Bulldogs bounced back in a big way in the Orange Bowl, where he uh, threw for 200 yards, two touchdowns, and Florida won 63-3 to over Florida State. So the three-peat never happened, but look, the Bulldogs do have a chance to win three national championships in four seasons and certainly, um, you can start throwing around the word dynasty if that were to happen. I mean, you look at Kirby Smart the last three seasons. It is absolutely ridiculous. He has 42 and two in his past three seasons. I mean, two losses in three years is pretty special. And if they were to break through and win it all again this year, it's an even tougher road, right? When you consider you know, having to go win multiple uh, playoff games now with a tougher path. So, um, again, we'll see if Georgia does do it though. I do think you throw around the, that word dynasty and say, all right, they, they have a great chance to maybe start doing what Alabama did for a decade run under Nick Saban. Maybe Kirby smart could do that with the Georgia Bulldogs without further ado. Here's a little bit of our conversation, catching up with Georgia starting quarterback, Carson Beck. Catching up here with, uh, Carson Beck, Georgia quarterback here at the Manning passing Academy. And, uh, what's this whole experience like, man, getting to be you, you're, when you're a player, you're getting coached every day out here. You're the one doing the coaching. What's this been like? No, nah, it's been a super cool experience. Obviously, this is my first year uh, coming here and the first day. So we just got done with our first practice. Um, but, yeah, no, it's super cool to be here, especially to get around um, like other college quarterbacks, um, you know, just start to build a connection with them, get to know the guys that, you know, are in the same position as you. You know, we're all in the same position. We're all out here having a good time. Um, excited for the rest of the weekend. I know all this talk last year was about three P. It didn't didn't go how you guys wanted, but obviously you finished strong with a big bowl win. What's the spring and summer been like, kind of for you up to this point? Yeah, um, spring and summer has been good. Obviously, like you said, uh, last season really wasn't exactly what we wanted as far as the finish goes. But um, each season is separate from the last. Um, yeah, we've been working really hard. I mean, I thought spring went really well as far as uh, some of the new guys coming in, some of the young guys, you know, really starting to develop because that's really what spring is about. Um, and then just starting to get that timing down again. And then obviously summer workouts are a grind. Um, we've been working really hard. Um, really proud of the guys, the way that we work and, you know, how things are starting to build. Um, but super excited to, you know, get into fall camp and eventually, uh, you know, get into the season. 
you lost uh, a couple weapons on offense, some of your alignment. You lose, uh, obviously, Brock and Ladden, but look like some guys are ready to step up. Oscar Delp, some other guys look really good throughout the spring. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we have so much talent um, as far as the offensive side of the ball goes. Obviously, you know, Bowers leaving, uh, Ladd leaving, Marcus leaving, um, our running backs leaving. New, You know, we're going to see a lot of new faces, um, but it's a lot of guys that have a lot of talent and are, are ready to go, you know. So I'm super excited about what we're going to be able to do as far as offense goes. ATM looked like he settled in pretty easily there in the backfield. What did you see from him in the spring? Yeah, um, obviously he's a really good back. Um, I think we have a really good running back room as well. Obviously, um, him, you got Branson, who's just coming back from an injury um, a year ago. Um, obviously very talented, the rest of the room. We got some younger guys, um, which, which is kind of the team. You know, it seems like we got not young, but like kind of middle of the road guys that have gotten playing time. And, you know, they're, they kind of have that edge to them that they're ready to step up and, you know, start making the plays. So excited for the season to come. What's been the message from Coach Smart kind of this offseason as you guys kind of come back? Because a lot of guys still on the roster are part of championship teams. What's been the message this offseason? Of course, um, just day by day, moment by moment. Um, don't look too far ahead. Don't look back to the past. I mean, we're, we're right where we're supposed to be. Just work hard each and every day and give it everything you've got 100%. And that's really all you can ask for from every single one of our guys. Last thing for you, NCAA video games coming out. Are you excited? Are you in the game? What's what's going on there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's so cool. Uh, especially younger, you know, growing up playing NCAA, thinking like to the future, you know, like obviously I wanted to be a college quarterback when I was 10, 11 years old. And I'm sitting there playing the video game. I'm like, oh, one day I'm going to be in the video game. And then they removed it or whatever, didn't have it, didn't know if it was going to come back. So for it to come back the last year that, you know, I'm in college is, is exciting. And I mean, I'll definitely be playing it. We saw your, your new ride. You didn't take the new ride out here, did you? Oh, no. No, I flew down here. <laughs> Carson, thanks for the time, man. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thanks again to Carson Beck. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, Florida quarterback Graham Mertz. We catch up with him. That's coming your way here in just a sec. The first one of my you guys, this episode is presented to you by friends over at eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. It is the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance, whether it's superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And with that eBay, eBay guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. That is ebaymotors.com. All right, thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to every dayers. Keep coming back and checking us out. Next week, we'll have a conversation with Missouri quarterback Brady Cook. Make sure you are checking that out if you're a Missouri fan. All right, to our Florida Gator fans, Graham Mertz and the Florida Gators. They are looking to get back to winning. After a rough, se rough season last year, the team is hoping to work their way to, you know, look, potentially being a playoff contender. If, if all goes well, we know the schedule is absolutely brutal. but um, Look, Graham Mertz and the Gators have the right mindset. They understand the, uh, you know, the battle that they're up against in having one of the toughest schedules in the country. And looking ahead this year, Graham Mertz says it's not about individual success. You know, he, he talked over the weekend with different reporters and said, look, I think the biggest thing is individual stats don't matter. Wins are all that matters. And so when we watch Carson Beck or, or Graham Mertz this year at Florida, uh, he says the reality is we didn't have that mentality last year. He said, I think for us, every day we walk in, we know what our record was last year, and we know what everybody says about it. He says all you can do is just go out there and try to win every game. That needs to be the mindset. He said every quarterback is telling our team, look, we're going to win every game. But it's how do you get everybody to buy into that and work towards that goal? Of course, Graham Mertz last season completed 72.9% of his passes for 2,900 yards, 20 touchdowns, just three picks. Also had four rushing touchdowns. He was, you know, one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the country. And he's also uh, been adding to his NIL workload as well. Uh, pick it up in that category. So uh, expectations raised. And he's got a little heat on him, too, with DJ Lagway coming in. Five-star quarterback that 
you know, one of the best in the country. And a lot of fans want to see what DJ Lagway can do. And so Graham Mertz is going to have to play well because uh, DJ Lagway is going to be breathing down his throat. Now, I still think they have to find ways to get them both on the field, but there's no doubt Mertz is a starter and he should be the leader of this team. And again, schedule is brutal. Mertz knows that. But can Florida jump up and surprise some people? That is going to be the big question for the Florida Gators this year is, you know, if that defense is a little bit better, the offense can run the football. Obviously, they lose Trevor Etienne, but uh, if they can find ways to be productive there, I think Florida and um, Billy Napier maybe could surprise some people. Maybe six and six is in the cards. You get there, you get back to a bowl game, and, you know, maybe we take Billy Napier off the hot seat for a little bit. But without further ado, here was our conversation with Florida quarterback Graham Mertz. Spending a couple minutes here with uh, Graham Mertz. Uh, what's what's this offseason been like, man? Now, you know, I guess last year maybe your head was spinning a little bit as the new guy in, and what, what's it been like having a little continuity here? It's been great. It's been great. I mean, I think that because for me it's you go through, you transfer, and it feels like you're a freshman again, like learning the playbook, getting to know the guys, getting to know your way around campus, all these different things. So after having a year under that, uh, learning the offense, playing in it, um, now you're at a point now where you get back in January and you can teach guys. You can sit down and meet with guys, talk about our offense, and start that process earlier. So for us, it's been fantastic. You know, to you know, to sit down with guys and run routes on air and know exactly what you're talking about, <laughs> and I've seen it on game day transfers. So it's uh, it's been great, really productive. The uh, spring game. I mean, obviously you guys lose Ricky Parasol, but it's good to see. Got you know everybody knows how good Trey is, but some other weapons. Looks like you guys got some some big time weapons on an offense. Talk a little bit about it. Yeah, we, we got a, we got a bunch of weapons. I mean, I could talk about that whole room, but uh, I think the the best thing we did was uh, we have a bunch of young guys. Where last year was their first year, and they were learning, and I think that we hit the ground running at the right time in January with me taking them and. and watching film, running routes, and they built up that confidence. And the spring ball got a little more confident. And you saw in the spring game that guys were kind of – that you get to that point where it just clicks. And I think we had a lot of guys that, that was their second year and it clicked for them, which is, which is big. And then we brought in uh, my guy from Wisconsin, uh, Chimere DK. So he's, a, he's an older guy, played a lot of ball, uh, great third down target in the slot, can play – really can play anywhere. Um, but he'll be big time for us. And then we got a bunch of older guys we got. Jaquavion Frazier's, we got uh, Khalil Jackson, we got a bunch of guys that Marcus Burke that play that X spot that and Elijah Badger from Arizona State. So we got we got a lot of depth in that room that they're all gonna make some plays, man. I'm fired up about them. You uh it's interesting. I mean you were the one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the country last year, but it's not like it was all like safe throws or anything. What do you attribute to why you were able to have such high completion percentage last year? Yeah, I think it's I mean that's my that's the quarterback's job. I think that's one thing I tried to I tried to simplify like in my approach every game okay what is my job what's the read how do I get there as efficient as possible so for me it's, it's trying to simplify the game and, and just play fast get the ball in the really fast guys hands and let them let them go make plays give me a quick thought on DJ obviously he came in and everybody's excited about him what you see from DJ likewise so far DJ DJ is so talented I mean I think the best thing he did is come in and just put his head down and work and that's I respect the crap out of him for that because he he comes in with humility every day, approaches it every day the same way. He's growing, he's, he's maturing, he's playing, he's playing better. Um, but he's so talented, man. I cannot, I cannot wait for like two, two, three years down the line where I can call him and just be like, hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> well, I compared, I mean, there was a Chris Leak year with Tebow. They found packages, ways to get him in. Do you think you guys will find ways to get DJ on the field? Yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever the game plan is, we're going we're gonna to roll with it. So, I mean, he's talented, he's big, he's fast. Uh, and he can spin it, so he's a great player. One more for you, Graham. The schedule is absolutely brutal. Everybody knows that. I, I, what do you guys take away from? I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, right? Good. <laughs> I think I think the biggest thing is we're we're excited for it. I think as a competitor, you you want that challenge. Like you don't want it, you don't want to be labeled as the easiest schedule in the country because <laughs> then it doesn't mean anything. So for us, it's as a competitor, you you want to have that game. You want to have the the prime time slot against a top ten team. You want to be a top ten team. And how do you become that? by winning those games. So for us, it's, we know what's ahead of us, but I don't, I don't think it's a, a daunting thing. I think it's more of you feel the urgency in, in every day to, to maximize that day, to, to be ready for that moment. Thanks so much for the time, Ed. We appreciate you. All right, thanks again to Graham Mertz. Still more to come here on Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. 
First, this episode is presented to you by our friends over at the Game Time app. Look, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier for uh, prices on the Game Time app. They actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time is going to take the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. Of course, last minute deals, you could save up to 60% off buying last minute for sporting events. Uh, they have flash deals. You could save even more with the exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And I, I like the all-in pricing. You toggle that feature on, it'll show your total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. Of course, seat views, you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect. Is there going to be a pole in front of you, obstructed view, whatever it is, they will let you know right there on the Game Time app. Go download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use our code Locked On College to get $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms apply. Create an account. Redeem our code Locked On College. Get $20 off. And download Game Time today. It is last-minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. Going along here, Locked On SEC, and we've been uh, playing for you some of our interviews, or bringing you some of our interviews from the Manning Passing Academy, some of the SEC quarterbacks that were there that we caught up with. If you missed it uh, just a couple days ago, we had our interviews with Jackson Arnold, the Oklahoma quarterback, Arch Manning, of course, the backup to Quinn Ewers at Texas, but for how long uh, we had those conversations on our other episodes of Locked On SEC. encourage you guys to go and check those out. And um, this next guy, perhaps the biggest wild card in the SEC this year, is Mississippi State quarterback Blake Shapin. They've got transfers all over on this roster, and Blake Shapin talked to the media for the first time since he made the transfer from Baylor over to Mississippi State. And uh, look, he gets to play for Jeff Lebby, the Mississippi State head coach, who, of course, was running the offense over at Oklahoma. And it's an interesting decision because he spent the first four years of his college career at Baylor, received an education in Lebby's offense from the opposite sideline in November 2022 when Lebby was Oklahoma's offensive coordinator. Uh, Blake Shapin's Bears escaped Norman with a 38-35 win that day. But uh, he said this past weekend, I got to witness his offensive person. He didn't really have to say much to me for me to just hop on board. Obviously, he recruited me, but wasn't much of a sales pitch there. I wanted to be at Mississippi State. Uh, Shapin does rank among the most important members of this transfer class. Zach Arnett went five and six last year with the Bulldogs, did not complete a full season before Mississippi State fired him. And now Jeff Levy comes in where, look, to be real, expectations are low. But um, when expectations are low, that's when you're a little dangerous because you're playing with house money at times. And, you know, you go into a game – down, you know, uh, 20 point underdogs. Why not just go out there, let it fly, and see what could happen? Shapin missed four games due to injury last year, threw for 2,100 yards, 13 touchdowns, and three picks. But in 27 career appearances at Baylor, threw for over 5,500 yards, 36 touchdowns, just 13 interceptions. He protects the ball well, takes care of it, got a powerful right arm, the ability to get the ball out of his hand quickly. And that's what Jeff Lubby liked about him. So what's it going to take for Blake Chapin and the Bulldogs to be successful this year? Well, Chapin talked much like a coach, said it's important to stick to the process. And uh, he said he does know what outsiders are saying about Mississippi State, but it's good motivation. He said, uh, I think we're in a good spot. He said, I think we had a really good spring. We were able to take strides. Obviously, it's new to a lot of people, a lot of new pieces. A lot of people have not been in this type of offense. So obviously, you're going to have your struggles, and it's a process, but excited about where we are and where we finished the spring, we had a good spring game. And, yeah, that's what was so interesting was seeing all the new receivers. I mean, they got some guys back at wide receiver, Jaden Wally, Creed Whitmore, Jordan Mosley, but, you know, some new pieces, Kevin Coleman and others coming in. Um, I like the tight ends, Justin Ball and Cameron Ball. In the backfield, Jeffrey Pittman, Kevon Lee, we'll see, you know, what they do there. But basically a whole new offensive line. I mean, Marlon Martinez from LSU coming over, Ethan Miner, Jacob uh, Jacoby Jackson, McKaylin uh, Pounders. I mean, it's just, it's all new faces there. But with that comes, hey, we got nothing to lose here. Nobody's expecting us to win. Let's see if we can sneak up on some people and do some damage. And so without further ado, here was some of our conversation with Mississippi State quarterback, Blake Chapin. 
All right, catch it up here with Blake Shapin, Mississippi State quarterback. And uh, how excited are you, man, to get this thing going? Uh, you know, I look at Mississippi State's roster, and I keep telling everybody they're going to need a, a program for week one to get to know all the new faces, including yourself. But what's, what's this offseason been like for you? Uh, it's been awesome. Obviously, it's been a transition coming from Baylor to Mississippi State. Um, obviously, different town, things like that, different people, coaches. But it's been awesome. I've enjoyed the whole process of it all. And like you said, we got a lot of new guys, new faces on the team, new coaches. So I'm excited for the year. I'm excited. And I'm getting to play for Coach Levy, one of the greatest coaches, so I'm excited. I was going to say, if anything, you know the, the offense is going to be good. Coach Levy is going to – I mean, he's got an arsenal of, of plays. But watching the spring game, I mean, you guys were – I mean, they, they were different dudes stepping up, transfer portal receivers left and right, and uh, running back room. I mean, it looks like you guys have a lot of weapons there. Yeah, no, we do for sure. I mean, we got a few older guys that we brought in in the transfer portal. Um, we got some younger guys that stepped up too, and so – it's exciting because you got some older guys and then you got some younger guys that are coming in that are great players that, that are going to make an impact that we're going to need later on in the season. So um, I'm excited for them. It's going to be fun. We've built a great connection up until this point, so hopefully we continue to do that. What did you see from the defense? Uh, obviously a lot of new faces there, but what, what did you see from them this spring? Coach Hutzler's awesome. He's a great he's an energy guy. He has a lot of energy every day. Um, their scheme, is they do a lot of different things, and so it's kind of hard to tell what they're in at times. Um, I think they're going to create a lot of chaos, honestly. And, and I, we got a lot of good guys on the defense, freaky athletic guys that they can make plays. So I'm excited to see. They tested us all the spring, so I'm excited to see what they can do. Have you ever been to a uh, – prior to transfer, have you been to a home game at Mississippi State before? No, I have not. It's my first time ever really being there, so it's my first time. So you're going to get indoctrinated into the whole cowbell culture now. Yeah, I hear, I hear it's pretty annoying, but <laughs> I hear it's real loud, so – that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, the key is that they quiet down when you're out there, right? No doubt. No doubt, for sure. Talk a little bit about your decision to, to move on and, and, and go to a new destination. What what did you like about Mississippi State, knowing this was going to be a whole new reset? Right. Uh, I was at Baylor for four years, um, and I had a great career. I wouldn't say anything bad about Baylor. I had a great time at Baylor, and, you know, all the things that I've learned up until this point happened at Baylor, but I felt like in this point in time, it was time for me to move on find a new destination, obviously, an offensive-minded head coach, OC, and Coach Levy. I think that was the biggest thing for me was finding that. Also, I've dreamed of playing the SEC my whole life, so that, I'm living out a dream that I've always always wanted to achieve. So, What's the best thing you've had to eat since you've been in Starkville so far? Two Brothers is great. I mean, that's the thing. There's so many great spots in, in Starkville. I can't really name out one, but Two Brothers is probably at the top of the list just because of their wings, their smoked wings. Um, and they just actually built like a thing called Older Brother, which I heard is like really good too. So I'm gonna try that out. What what excites you most about coming in? We know the SEC is difficult. I mean, it's a grind every week. What excites you most about coming into this conference? I think playing in the different stadiums. Obviously, we got a tough schedule, so we're gonna walk into some pretty hostile environments. So I think, you know, I perform better under pressure, and I'm excited for it, and I can't wait. Um, and I grew up, like I said, 2:30 games. I was watching SEC games growing up. I was watching the night games, Tennessee, Alabama, all those teams, Mississippi State, Dak Prescott when he was at Mississippi State. So um, it's a blessing just to be where I'm at, so I'm excited. Talking with Blake Chapin, when you're not playing football, what are you doing? Playing golf. <laughs> What's the handicap? Golf. Don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I want to leave that out. <laughs> I'm all right, though. I'm not a scratch golfer, I'll say that. What's the strength? Drive, short game? Drive's been a little iffy lately. Um, got a little slice in there, but I'd say my mid-range game with my, my short irons and things like that. So, Are you excited about the, the – we're weeks away from the NCAA video game coming out. Are you excited about that? Are you in the game? Yeah, I'm in the game. I'm excited for it, and, and I can't wait to, to see what that looks like. I think they've done a lot of good things with that, with editing and, and all that stuff like that. So I think crowd noise is a big thing, and I'm excited to play. It's going to be fun to play with myself. I've never been able to do that, so that's cool. I was going to say, you were real little last time the game came out, right? Oh, I know, and they didn't have the last names. Actually, they have fake names, so now it's pretty cool you got your last name in there. So, yeah. Blake, best of luck this season, man. Thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thanks again to Mississippi State quarterback Blake Shape, and thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to every day. Let's keep coming back and checking us out. Like we said, next week for Missouri fans, we'll have our conversation with Brady Cook. You'll get to hear from him as a big year for him coming in as Luther Burden is a preseason Heisman watch list candidate, and Brady Cook expects to be one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC once again. Look for that episode coming next week. Hey, for your second listen, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. It's called Locked On Sports Today, streaming for you 24-7, covering all the top sports stories of the day, 
with our local experts on Locked On. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked On SEC. Come on back next week and check us out. We'll talk to you guys then.